go. Hey, welcome to the Construction Zone Online. I'm Pastor Marcus. You remember my daughter, OG. Well, I'm here with Miles and with Marshall, and I've got a challenge for them today. They're going to try to wrap up OG in, in a roll of toilet paper like a mummy. They're going to do it in 60 seconds or less. Well, 60 seconds exactly. We're going to see how much of her they can cover. They can cover everything but their mouth. So you guys ready? I got the time, I got the clock in my hand right now. On your marks. Get set. Go. You gotta go faster than that, you guys. time, you can stop now. In Jesus' time, uh, when they would bury a person, they would wrap them in cloth, and they would put them in a tomb. You've seen maybe pictures and cartoons of what they did with Jesus. When Mary went to visit the tomb of Jesus, she found out he wasn't there, and his burial cloth, no, we're not going to do that, but his burial cloth was, was folded in the corner. And, uh, and that was because... And that's because, Je that's because Jesus was no longer dead. He was alive. We're going to talk about that today. Um, but first, let's go visit the Morning Star and see if Captain Blunderbuss has found that treasure yet. We'll see you later. Wow, Captain, we just barely escaped from that snake. I didn't know you were so handy with a sword. Yes, that's something I still need to teach you how to do. Look, we're not far from our treasure. X marks the spot. I wonder what we'll find. What are you going to do with your share, Captain Blunderbuss? Well, I'll need a bit to live and to eat, but most will go to the orphanage I grew up in. They need it more than I do. Are you serious? Gold Grubber said we'd be filthy rich when we found this treasure, and you're just going to give it away? My treasure isn't on Earth, Stan. Jesus died and rose so that I could have life in heaven. That's where my real treasure lies. So, if you weren't following Jesus, you'd be rich already. Money is a good servant, but a terrible master. Believe me, before Jesus found me, the devil took more than his share. Avast, Dan. You're standing in quicksand. Oh, my Captain, help, help, help! It's okay. Stan, don't panic. Uh... You're right on the edge. Get rid of all your extra weight and lean back. There's a log behind you you can sit on. Now wiggle your legs slowly and work them back up. Wow, you, you, you saved my life. I, I could have drowned. No, that wouldn't have happened. But you could get pretty stuck if you don't know what you're doing. And if another big snake comes by... Somebody should put up a fence. That's what I mean by gold and by treasure, Stan. The desire for riches is a trap. Once you learn to give up everything to the Lord, you're truly free. All right, you blistering barracudas. We are nearing Port Chop Island. You know what this means? Body break, yeah, yeah. No, evil. It means we're gonna catch the Morning Star. Do you know what we're going to do with them? Roast marshmallows on the beach. I'm not asking you anymore. Scribbles, what are we going to do? I'll get the treasure, kidnap someone? No kidnapping, but I am going to get off the slippery eel and chase down the treasure. But, but you don't have a map. Are you kidding me? I did nothing but study that map up and down, day and night. I think about it when I ate and dream about it in my sleep. I could draw the map myself. Do you know why? Because you got new crayons. I didn't ask you. Because, Scribbles, treasure is everything. 
if we don't leave the island with it, everything is wasted. You, you don't want us to go with you? No. I have a different plan for you. W what sort of plan do you have for us? If ye were better pirates, I'd have you take over the Morning Star. You two ain't smart enough for that, but you're good at breaking things. So I want you to sink the Morning Star where she stands. You think you can handle that? With, with the cannon? What else are you gonna use? Fishing poles? You two got less brains than a raisin. Yup, yeah, but we're out of raisins. I ate them all. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> all I ask is that you sink the Morning Star. I'm taking the dinghy to shore, and I'm bringing Lobster's Gold back. We have a problem. What's wrong, Fergie? Pets should come in from the south. It's the slippery eel. Oh no, everyone. It's time to man your stations. I need cannonballs. Oh, we have a problem. Remember when I said there were cannonballs in the hold? They're actually grapefruits. That'll make a mess, but it won't defend us from pirates. We need to take out their cannon. But we don't want to actually hurt anyone. Dude, they want to hurt us. Luther, you have the answer. I do? Do you have any of those meat pies in the galley? Yeah, bro, but it's no time for lunch. The meat pies that can break a captain's tooth probably can put a hole in the boat. Firing cannon number one. Yo, ready? Yo, aim? Yo, fire? Yo. They're fired, but they missed. Here's the pie. Nice team person, no, Luther? Offended, of course not, dude. Somebody on the other ship ordered one of my pies. Good to hear. I'm aiming from their cannon. What happened? They hit our cannon. Now what are we going to do? Gold Grubber told us to sink their ship, so we're going to ram them. You mean, don't crash our boat into theirs? That's right. Oh, well, take down their sails so they can't move, Katie. That's what I was thinking too. The main sail is down. Hey, what's this? Pie crust? It's crunchy, but it's good. We can't fire, and we can't ram, and we can't even escape now. They've got so much food, they're just throwing it at us. Yo. Oh, here comes another one. I think the boat is sinking. Hey, don't shoot the bottom of the ship. They're too delicious to waste. We've got to get out of here, Weevil. Let's take the lifeboat. But they'll shoot us out of the water. No, we'll surrender. It seems like they got better food than us anyway. Yo. All right, then. Oh, you two are arrested for piracy. Fergie, take them down to the brig. You bet, Shaq. Come on, you cutthroats. They're going downstairs. Say, you got any more of those pies? I've got a hankering for pastry. Yep. Well, I guess everyone knows why they call you Cannonball Katie now. We won, Stuart. I hope the captain found the treasure. Gold Grubber isn't with these guys. They said that he's on the island. Well, since we can relax now, let's sing another song. Keep your treasure in heaven where there are no thieves or robbers there. Neither rust or moth destroy the treasures found in heaven. For where your treasure is, a search and work, protect and live. For where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. The money you hold in your hand, it slips right through like grains of sand. But not a thing on earth can steal your treasure jump in heaven. For where your treasure is, your search and work, protect and live. For where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Keep your treasure in heaven where there are no thieves or robbers there. Neither rust or moth destroy the treasure stored in heaven. For where your treasure is, 
is a search and worth protecting. Live for where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. For where your treasure is, a search and worth protecting. Live for where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. Joseph of Arimathea was a secret disciple of Jesus. When Jesus was crucified, Joseph wanted to do one last act of love for him. He called Pilate for Jesus' body so he could give him a good burial. He and Nicodemus wrapped Jesus in 75 pounds of perfume and spices and linen cloth. They brought Jesus to Joseph's own tomb and laid him to rest. Joseph and Nicodemus rolled the stone in front of the tomb to seal it. Two of Jesus' followers, both named Mary, watched him from across the garden. The Pharisees also went to Pilate. Sir, when Jesus was alive, he said that in three days he would rise again. Please send someone to guard the tomb for three days, or else his disciples will steal the body and say he's been risen from the dead. That would be most terrible. Go ahead and send up the squad of soldiers, Pilate told them. On Sunday morning, there was a violent earthquake. An angel came down from heaven. He looked like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid they shook and fell down as if they were dead. The angel rolled away the stone and sat upon it. Jesus conquered sin and death, just like he said he would. On Sunday morning, Mary Magdalene and her friend came to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, not knowing who would move the stone for them. When they arrived, Mary found that the stone had already been rolled away. They saw two angels. One said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Quickly, go tell his disciples. The women ran back to tell the disciples. Mary Magdalene went to tell Peter and John, who ran back to the tomb. Peter went inside first and saw the cloth that Jesus was wrapped in, but not Jesus. They finally understood what Jesus and the prophecies had said. Jesus must rise from the dead. They went home full of joy. I guess Mary wasn't sure what to believe because she stood outside the tomb crying. She turned and saw someone standing there. Dear woman, he said, why are you crying? Mary thought it was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, please tell me where you have put him. I will go and get him. Mary, the man said, it was Jesus. She turned to him and said, teacher, don't hold on to me, Jesus said, for I, have, I haven't yet gone to the father, but go find my brothers and tell them. I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. Mary did what Jesus told her. Jesus, her Lord, was alive. Hey, welcome back. Do you know what this is? If you said it's a goat, you're correct. But more than that, this is a beanie baby. Now, I only have one of these. I might have a couple others laying around, or Olivia might. But back in the 90s, these were super popular. It's like a bean bag but it's, you know, inside an animal. And in the 90s, these were sold as collectibles, and, and I know about people who, who spent thousands of dollars on these things, thinking, like, this goat someday will be worth $300, $400, so I'm gonna buy it for $5, you know, or whatever they sold them for back then, I don't, I don't even know. They had them at McDonald's, and McDonald's would sell them out all the time. Anyway, turns out, here we are, uh, about 20 years later, and these Beanie Babies are worth practically nothing. So people really treasured these. Some people put them in special boxes or, or made sure you had the tag. I don't have the tag even, um, thinking it'd be worth more that way. Um, but they're not really worth anything. <laughs> but they're good to they're nice toys. We're almost done with our study of Jesus. Last week we talked about how Jesus died on the cross. And for anyone else, um, that would be the end of the story. But Jesus isn't like anybody else. You see, last week we found, found about how Jesus was arrested, how he uh, allowed them to crucify him on the cross. And he could have stopped all of that. In fact, he even said he could send angels to, to defend him if he wanted to. But he had come to save us from our sins. And so um, he died put him in the tomb, but on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus had power over death. Because of what he did, death is no longer the end for any of us. We can live forever in heaven with Jesus. 
uh, Jesus is the greatest treasure we can find. Because Jesus died and rose again, we can have eternal life. All the things that we have, like this toy, it's gonna wear out. My, my daughter, OJ, has toys that have really looked rough because they've been played with a lot. But the things in heaven will last forever. Jesus gave us heaven, but that's not all he gives us. He gave himself so that we can have a personal relationship with him. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. If money and power are your treasure, then they'll become your God. And so those things will become more important to you than anything else. Those are your treasures. What if, like this beanie baby, all of a sudden what you thought was so valuable is now really worthless? Now, there's nothing wrong with enjoying things on this earth, but work for eternity. Bring people to Jesus. Seek the things of God. Jesus said their treasures, their rewards in heaven will be great. And so he'll give a reward that you have for eternity that nobody can take away. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you not only died on the cross for our sins, but you, but you rose again, um, showing us that death had no power and that you made the way for eternity for us. I pray, Father God, that we will live this life, everyone watching, we will live this life not to get a bunch of stuff, to get a bunch of toys, to get a bunch of money, or to be really famous, Lord, but that we would live to, um, to fill heaven, Father God, to have your uh, rewards in our life, Lord God, living for your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thanks for watching. A little bit, we'll have a, a drawing, so we'll see you then. All right, well, this is the end of our show, and here I am with Oji. How are you today, Oj? Okay. Okay, what do you got there in your hand? I got the magician guy that just got born. He just got born? Yes. Oh, he's really small. All right, but today is the end of the video, so we should get going here. We had a competi a challenge for this week, and you're supposed to make what? Candyland. Candyland. Did you all make Candyland? Who made Candyland? And let's see all the beautiful artwork we have. Here is Abner's Candyland. And Anson's Candyland. Here's Declan's Candyland. Here's Amish's Candyland. Here's Erica's Candyland. Here's Jonas's Candyland. And here is OG's Candyland. And so... Let's draw a name to see who gets the prize today. And the winner is... Eh, eh? Erica. 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 Hey, congratulations, Erica! You won the next Lego Nation here. And since you live in another country, we'll mail that to you, because... Here, if you live in Ukraine, we can hand it off. Sort of. Okay. Anyway, so... Alright, so I'm going to tell a, a joke here, okay? Why did the teddy bear skip lunch? Um, because... Because... He was not hungry? Well, sort of. Because he was stuffed! <laughs> and stuff like it. Yeah! <laughs> Yeah, because all to their stuffed toys. All right. Okay, so we have a challenge for next week. So OG is holding a, a beanie baby here. And no, it's a real goat. Oh, it's a real goat? Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to pretend it's a beanie baby. This week, I hope that you all have your own stuffed toy. If you don't, you should probably get ask for one for Christmas. Anyway. Uh, here's what you're playing. You can take a picture of your favorite stuffed toy. You can be in the picture with it. That's fun. But if you rather have, you know, if you rather not, that's okay too. Take a picture just with your stuffed toy. And then we'll see all your pictures of stuffed toys next week. Sound good? Yes. All right. <laughs> so, let's say goodbye to the boys and girls. Yes. Bye. Bye. See you next week. The, the good just said bye. Did you hear him say Bah, he said, I mean, bah. bah. Okay. <laughs>